Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Baker Broadcast a special, special tonight, inshallah ta'ala. Broadcasting here, 7.30 p.m. GMT. Assalamu alaikum to all of you tuning in online, on YouTube, on Facebook, and for joining us. Today we have our usual, but nonetheless non special, Dr. Abdul Haq, who's with us all the time, mashallah. But today we have with us, joining us, uh, a very special guest. And a dear sister in Islam, dear sister Naima Roberts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. It's a real pleasure, mashallah, to have you on our show tonight, uh, sister Naima. And um, I think from myself, uh, I know maybe our viewers, listeners have seen you, heard of you, um, but for me, I remember your book uh, from my sister's lips that was given to me a few years ago, subhanAllah. And I, I remember it distinctly and, and I enjoyed reading it. That was a while ago now, I'll be honest with you. It's a while ago. But it was, mashallah, yeah. a very powerful book, a very uh, insightful book. And I remember sharing it with a few people and uh, it was, it was kind of connected on, on so many different levels. And I think, uh, especially as a as a Muslim writer, as a sister who wears niqab, uh, this can sometimes be a challenging kind of space. But I know, mashallah, the book has done very well. And inshallah ta'ala, tonight, we are using the theme of show up because, mashallah, Sister Naima is not just a writer of one books, but is an author of many, mashallah ta'ala. And so is tonight, we're going to be talking about showing up this is a motivational session we're going to be talking about all sorts of different things inshallah so we want you our sisters and brothers gentlemen ladies out there to get involved with the discussion drop in your names drop in your questions and let us know what you're thinking and bring your forward your questions inshallah and we'll start our chat inshallah assalamu alaikum sister badriya mashallah octavia salam alaikum kira mashallah it's good to see you again assalamu alaikum hip-hop uh, Persa, Assalamu alaikum, Malahat, Mashallah, all the usuals, Mashallah, love to see you say again, Alhamdulillah, uh, Sabrina, Mashallah, good to see you again, sister. And this is, uh, uh, Inshallah Ta'ala, going to be a great show where you can really ask Sister Naima, for those of you that know of her or don't know of her, I'm surprised you don't, but you should know of her, uh, fantastic work, fantastic author, and Inshallah Ta'ala, we'll carry on with the show. At this point, I'll pass it on to Dr. Abdul Haq, who will... Yes, I want to share something with Sister. I, I know Sister Naima, mashallah, tabarakallah. I've known her for a number of years. Um, and I have say she doesn't know this, but inspired by her as a sister, right back to from when we were doing TV documentaries and everything like that. Knew her late husband, very close individual. And for those who don't know, in my when my uh, own publication, second publication came out, gave a dedication to him, Suleiman Rahimahullah, um, and I shared that with Sister Naima. But Sister Naima, I want to share something with you that I never said to you before. When I had, in Saudi, when I was going in for an operation about, I think it was 2009, either 2009, 2011, as I went into the operating theatre, it's quite hilarious actually, many of the staff there were Filipinos. And when they heard my accent, and they saw, they said, are you Muslim? I said, yeah. And they said, do you know Naima Roberts? This is just before I went under. And I said, and I was like, yes. And they said, oh, please, please. Can you tell her we've read deep? They were non-Muslim. We've read her book from my sister's lip. It's fantastic. They were male and female in the operating wow. theatre, all scrubbed up, ready to put me under anaesthetic. And I've never told you this, but I remember as, as we're on now, it just came back to me. Literally, I was thinking, I'm just about to go under and they're asking, do I know you because of my British accent? And they've all read your book. They've all read your book and they're saying, will you see her again? If you're going to see her again, I said, well, bring me out of the anaesthetic and maybe I will be, but, but mashallah. So these were, I as I said, all, all non-Muslim, Filipino staff, and they were so excited to know that I knew you because um, they'd all read your book. It was it was a hit in, in the Philippines and amongst the Filipino community in Saudi Arabia, mashallah. Wow, that's an incredible story, literally an incredible story, subhanAllah. You know, when you put a book out into the world, you, you really have no idea where it will end up, you know, in whose hands, in whose head, in whose heart uh, your message will end up. So that's a really amazing thing to hear that, you know, such 
such an unusual group of people, you know, <laughs> connected your British accent with the author of this book that they had liked and were like, you know, give us the details. Come on, do you know her? So <laughs> I'm just located for sharing that with you. That's crazy. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, Wajid, um, I'll let you open up and ask some of the questions with Sister Naima. And if you don't mind sometimes, and Sister Naima doesn't yeah, sure. mind, I, I will come in because I've, I have a context as well um, and some of the work that I've done with Sister Naima as well. But I think it's really key to hear um, from Sister Naima about this book and retrace any steps backwards into not only the other books that she's authored and the, the rationale or the purpose behind those books, but what she's also done to inspire and support others who are now um, budding authors or thinking about taking that path, inshallah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for you, uh, Sister Naima, where did your journey begin as a writer? Was this something that was always in you or was it like once you kind of had somewhere where you felt like I got to share the story? Because every writer like has a story burning inside them. What point was that for you? Was that like when you were little or like as you grew up or, or what? I think that's, I think that's a really, really good question because I think I always loved creative writing. And I enjoyed it very much at uh, high school. But as I kind of got to the end of my studies, I had no intentions whatsoever of being a writer because I wanted to be rich and I wanted to make money. So being a writer in my head was like, no, that is not the way to go. So I, 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 I left it. I had no interest in writing at all. I was like, I'm going to university. I'm going to have a business. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to make that money, make those coins. I wasn't interested in writing at all. And it was only when I had my first son, and uh, I, I tell this story a lot, where we used to go to the library uh, every week, take out 15 books at a time, beautiful books for children. But at that time, we're talking about early 2000s, almost no books about Muslims or Islam. And the ones that were there were quite dry, uh, quite dry and maybe, you know, just, just not the kind of beautiful poignant uh, books that I was enjoying with my son. So I just said, you know, I, I want there to be a reflection of my son and our family in the books that we read. And that's really when I started writing uh, children's stories, uh, especially sort of children's stories about Islamic uh, ideas or Islamic values or Islamic history. Uh, and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, I came into the industry right at the beginning of the discussions about multiculturalism uh, and about representation. In fact, representation was not a discussion at the time. It was more, there were a few publishers that had a multicultural publishing agenda and I happened to find them and send them my work. So my first book, The Swirling Hijab, was published by a non-Muslim publisher that was interested in publishing um, in publishing multicultural stories uh, and that's really my niche uh, in the, certainly in the children's book world my niche is multicultural literature for children uh, representation diversity inclusion etc has all become now but that's that's how i got started and it was literally i wanted to be part of the change that i wanted to see um and yeah and uh, yeah i think who is it who has the saying i think it's tony morrison she, the way she says if there is a book that you want to read that has not been written, then you must be the one to write it. So I think that was very much the case with me. Okay, mashallah, that's a very different take. I think it was, was it uh, Hemingway or Tom Sawyer I said that if I want to read a good book, I write it. And so oh. I think there's a slightly different take on that. But uh, I think you're right though, mashallah, you know, um, but you're right, you know, you don't get into that kind of world for like you said you don't get it because the riches aren't abundant and the coins not there as such but it it's it comes from a place of passion then it comes from a place of, of of that desire to want to tell that story and so when you started on that journey what was that like for you because writing as much as you get to share your work afterwards it's very much the tip of the iceberg you know it's that fruit after the years of nurturing and cultivating the field as it were so where did, you, where did you get that drive? I mean, your, your son being that, there to inspire you. But what was that drive to sort of make sure it hit the shelf in the way it did? It's a panel that it's, that's a fantastic question. I actually, I, if it hadn't been for my late husband pushing me, 
uh, Allah yirhamu, I actually don't know whether I would have had the guts to actually put those pieces of paper into the envelopes and send them off to the publishers. So what I was doing is I was tinkering. I was, I was, you know, writing a little bit here, writing a little bit there, messing about with it, changing this, changing that. And I was doing that for a long time. And, and, and my, my late husband said to me, so when are you going to send these off to publishers? And I had uh, 10 different excuses. One of them was that the printer is not working. So he said, all right, let's go to the office. You're going to print them at the office and we're going to get the envelopes from the office and you're going to send them. And that's what we did. And Qadr Allah, it was just by Allah's Qadr that that first, that first batch, one came back and said yes, almost immediately. They, they read it wow. and they were like, this is exactly what we need. Um, no one's talking about hijab. Nobody's talking about hijab in this particular way. We need this. Uh, and then I just started working with them afterwards. So I, my, my writing career has been a, a series of very fortunate accidents, really, um, where, you know, it's, it's, um, it's been like one thing has led to another, led to another, led to another. And because I was one of the only Muslim authors at the time that had access to mainstream publishers, I did manage to, 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 to place a lot of my manuscripts, alhamdulillah, and then progress to start writing novels for teenagers as well, uh, which was never the plan, because I didn't think I could write novels at all uh, until I got the idea, and then I pitched it to one of the publishers, and they were like, this sounds amazing, yeah, go ahead and do it. So that was the first of the six novels. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I would say, before between the first two books and maybe the next sort of three five ten there was a period of a lot of trial and error writing changing experimenting trying to find my voice trying to find my niche and I always advise writers to do that right off the bat don't think that the first thing that you're going to write is going to be perfect and you're going to send it off and you're going to get an amazing book deal and that will be you set for life that's not how it works a lot of the time we firstly need to read a lot of the material that we are hoping to to kind of you know to replicate uh, and we need to write and pretend it write badly for a long time before we actually find our voice find our stride and start writing well and, and finding our niche in this kind of big marketplace. It can take time. Alhamdulillah, my journey was a bit protracted, I'd say, um, or, you know, it was kind of, uh, it was made shorter, but still I do remember writing a lot of very, very, very bad stories on the way. So they oh, never saw yeah. the right can I, can I jump in? Can I jump in this, Sonoma? Because you mentioned, that's a really um, important point that you mentioned. I wanted to ask you, for, so your voice, your style, okay, you've mentioned about finding your way and everything like that. How much did the pub, any publisher want you to amend and adjust your style? Um, I, because, because I know when I, I finished my PhD and literally my professor said, we want this to be in a book with, here's the book, the book deal and everything. And I was like, no, I'm finished. And they said, no, um, this, is, this needs to go be published. And then there was that period of time where uh, the, the publishers, a big um, company, were coming backwards and forwards, and I had to proofread the elements and they changed certain things slightly. And I was like, I'm not changing this. Um, this is my PhD, do what you need to do with it. And in the end, they didn't change very much of it at all. They just edited <laughs> a particular parts so of this chapter we're not going to put in because it doesn't fit with the ambit of, so my voice remained in that, which I was grateful for. And I've worked with you. You've been directing me with my, my latest, um, should I say, transcripts or manuscripts. How much of your voice gets compromised, if at all? When it... <clears throat> Sister, we can't seem to hear you very well at the moment. Should we try that again? Yeah. Can you hear me us? now? Sorry, I was yes, yes. My apologies. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. Uh, when it comes to writing for children, um, typically they need to like the way that you have done it in the first place for them to even say yes. Um, I, in terms of my writing style, I haven't 
interference from publishers um really even with my novels you know my, my editor was very relaxed um about my novels that the the editor gave me the most pushback actually was my editor at cube um when i did uh, she wore red trainers and i'm not sure whether is my camera okay can you guys yes, hear me yes yeah. yeah we can am i okay yeah yeah so yeah so my editor at cube really was the one that was kind of most involved in in, in making changes and, and, and kind of challenging me on things not the voice but what maybe the characterization things like that um but in general i've been fortunate to have publishers that have been quite supportive of the way that i the way that i write uh so i haven't had um voice is not typically the thing that publishers will will kind of mess about with uh, it's more so if it's non-fiction it will be certain arguments that you're making maybe they might want you to strengthen them uh, if it's fiction they may question aspects of the plot or the character or the dialogue but your writing style typically they have to like your writing style to want to go with the book from my experience and i think it's um just to say walikum salam to sister huda queen of jordan um and uh, i think uh, somebody wrote there you know that um the uh, sister rezina wrote a, a message if we can have that back up please hassan it was a very poignant message mashallah and uh, i think you, you're right in the sense that um you know you, you've got to capture their the 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 publisher's imagination you've got they've got to see that sort of the light at the end of that tunnel before they invest their time their effort and their energy in you um and i think you're right that you know you you spend all this time editing and toying mashallah you you were quick to get from where you needed to be and there yeah so sister rezina said we write because uh, nobody listens and i think it's mashallah that you find that not just that voice but you find that space where that story fits in and you can share that story um with that voice and that meaning and that connection of all different places but the other thing is is the more specific that story can be the more universal appeal it has as dr abdul haq uh, beautifully highlighted right at the beginning of the show in the sense of the filipino nurses and the connection overseas and that that might not even come to your mind as a as a target market but i think um i think there's there's a lot of sisters and brothers out there who've got a story in them uh just for our uh, sister malahat was just asking where you're from so maybe a little bit of background would be helpful inshallah in just a moment and uh but also just about sort of you know when you when you're going through this process mashallah like you said you know your your husband your lay husband alhamdulillah bless him uh you know he he supported you through that but alongside that you know what what kind of advice do you have for people to to write out you know as we say in the, in the right well you got to write out the rubbish Yeah, you got to write out those bad stories before you get to the good ones. You got to dig in the dirt before the gold right comes up. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no definitely 100%. As I said, you know, you have to be prepared to write badly in order to find your voice and to get to, you know, what it, to get to the gold. As you, two things I always tell people. One, read widely, wisely and well. reading is 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 like reading and writing are like this you can't write well and not read well so reading is for me where it starts reading widely wisely and well and then with writing try to write daily and be prepared to write badly it's okay because it's just for you and you're just practicing and you will get better you will make changes you will edit you will iterate and that that is how you find your voice that's how you find your style that's how you by just practicing 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 so that that's we really all people have to do it doesn't get more complicated than that i'd like to ask um sometimes your message is a bit bit the bit choppy i think on the the, the communication back sister name and um, maybe it's our side but i want to ask as as we we're, we're discussing want to get into showing up okay and what you're saying about showing up and i'm going to throw this out to you and, and this is a um i think an interesting thing there you are showing up nikab wearing 
always been niqab wearing, alhamdulillah. Your personality comes through, your strength comes through, your intelligence comes through. So I want you to start, if you don't mind, talking to us about what it means to show up and let talk us through why you've talked, entitled your book in this way as well, because you've certainly showed up, a, 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 as far as I'm concerned, and other brothers and sisters would be concerned, and represented. That's what I understand by showing up <laughs> and being visible and, and being participative. So please enlighten us. Well, show up is a phrase that I, I kind of I coined when I was looking at you know, what I was going to title my next book. Um, and it's based on the work that I did on myself and the work I did with my coaching clients over the past few years. And a lot of people do think that showing up means to do something in a public arena, you know, to, to make a show of yourself almost. And the wonderful thing about showing up is that it actually has nothing to do with the public. It has nothing to do with fame. It has nothing to do with even making a noise or making a stand out there in the big world. Showing up is a decision that we get to make every day. And all it means is to show up for your life, to be present, to be mindful, and to live your life in a purposeful and powerful way. And that is available for everyone. It's got nothing to do with a public platform. It has nothing to do with a career. It has got nothing to do with, you know, being confident, being a public speaker or anything like that. It's literally a choice that I'm encouraging every one of us to make, man, woman, young, old, rich, poor, whoever, to recognize the blessing of this life that they are given and the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them in how he chose to bless them with certain attributes, certain characteristics, certain personality traits, certain opportunities, and be prepared to show up for that, not as a victim, but as a hero, no matter what life throws your way. And that's really the rallying call behind the book, Show Up. And that's the meaning behind the title. A lot of people do think it's got something to do with some public display it has nothing to do with that because my belief is that if every one of us every single one of us lived our lives purposefully and we would transform society the problem is for many of us we're looking at something big to change before we change and i'm saying Forget about the big changes. Forget about that circle of concern and those things that you're worried about that are beyond your control. Don't waste your time and energy thinking about those things. Look at your sphere of influence. Look at yourself. Look at how you are showing up for yourself, for your people, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a family, whether it's a business, whether it's a community. How are you showing up? Because that's something that you control over. And so it's such an empowering idea because there's no excuses. There's no space for excuses. There's no, no place to hide. In fact, a lot of people who read, I felt you were talking directly to me and you were sweeping aside all my excuses for why I can't do this. I can't be that enough this and I'm not enough that. And saying that all of that is just your limiting beliefs. And you have a choice. You can choose to be a victim or you can choose to be a hero. The whole idea of showing up is I'm asking everyone to make a decision to be the hero of their life story and live like a hero because your life is a masterpiece. Every single one of us, our lives are a blessed masterpiece. Respect for who they are. And, and, and the role that they have to play in their life. And this could be whether you, you are a husband, you know, looking after age, expect yourself and the value that you bring oh. put around you, intrinsic value. So, I mean, it's there's lots of layers to showing up, but that is really the... the yeah. The basic message of show up. And that's really what I want everybody to take from the book. 
Now, I think just from, mashallah, there's a, I think for me, that there's, there's something you said that's very powerful there, and that's show up every day. So it's not just about, like you said, it's not about an event, it's not about something that's going to happen, it's about being you every day. And um, I think just to, just to explore that a little bit, because we, we, we get a sense of your passion behind that and your experience, like you said, of coaching individuals and all the rest of it. But what sort of compelled you to write this book right now for you, inshallah? We can't hear you at the moment, sister. I think, um, I think the show up, which is, you know, this book here. The line is really bad, and I apologize. I haven't. What's your connection? Can you hear me now? Um, so, yeah, can he, what's your connection? Because you can, you can, if you want, you can, can you reconnect. Hear me now? Yes, no? we can, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. The connection is very bad. I don't know why. This book, what I'm, what I teach in this book is really the lessons that I learned of my late husband, and I couldn't have written the book. While he was alive, I learned the lessons yet. I talk about in the book, which is life circumstances and. Those challenges, oh, they're here to teach yeah. us to become a better version of ourselves, right? So I don't know whether you can hear me or not. Ah! It's breaking up, sister. It keeps breaking up. You see, I think, but I think you're starting to unpack that for us because sometimes when we hear these kind of books, we hear these kind of speakers. You know, it's like, well, it's all right for you. You know, your your life's all shiny and and, and glittery and all the rest of it. But actually, it's coming from a real place. Walikum uh, salam, floating man. Walikum salam, ibtisam, ibtisam, sister ibtisam. And so just come back to what you're saying now, your sister Naima, is that, you know, this has come from a real place for you. This has come from a place where, you know, uh, you've been through challenges in life. You've been through hardships. But it's you've kind of, like you said, you know, that image is a very poignant image of somebody kind of walking uphill. But there's a certain tenacity with that first step reaching out you know the, the, the head's held up and the shoulders are back and the, the you know and, the, and it's driving forward and that that there's a drive that comes from individuals because like you said a lot of people don't have that drive they might have everything but they don't have that that ambition and that drive or that even that appreciation and that gratitude to to be to be striving for something Oh, we're not getting smoke. we're tested with something. Let me leave. Yeah. Do you want to try leave reconnecting then? Yeah. Back. I'm going to leave and come back. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. please, because we're not catching any of your words, and, and that's why we're really here. Jazakallah khair. But yeah, yes. Subhanallah. Um, so. Yeah, with with sister now, what while she reconnects, um, her husband, um was inspirational in himself but one of the things i saw from from him brother suleiman rahim allah is the support that he gave for sister naima and that in, in encouraging her to open her wings and to, to fly and she as you can see mashallah she was like that within herself already and in contrast to what we see from some other brothers um and some other husbands where they have an understanding that their, their wives should be almost suppressed, repressed, and that that's the role of the woman. And Sister Naomi has been an example to sisters and brothers. Okay, and as she comes back on, she was the one who came to me in 2003. I still have the email where she said to me, you need to write a story of her life. And I'm like, why? <laughs> she said, no, <laughs> every, everyone is referring to the, the autobiography of Malcolm X, which is excellent, fantastic book, which is an American context and everything. She said, we don't have a British context. And I said, well, I can't juxtapose me compared to him. I'm nothing 
I can't even walk in these shoes or a shadow or anything like that. But she wasn't saying to do that. She said, we need to give something relatable to yeah. the urban youth, black and white, um, Asian growing up, who will be able to relate to aspects of your story. That was in 2003. And I left it. And last year, I spoke to her again and she said, you need to do this and really encouraged me to get the manuscript manuscript together, some of the um, opening chapters and everything like that. So she really is, uh, we say this is a motivational session. I'm, I'm an example of that. I'm not saying that I need a whole lot of motivation. I hope I am motivated in what I do. But this aspect here, I kept put into the back burner. I've done my, I've published my PhD yeah. and everything like that already. So I thought, that's it. I write articles. Mm -hmm. But seeing the energy from Sister Naima, seeing what she's done and how accomplished she is in herself with her own writing and the encouragement and the workshops that she's giving to other sisters, I think that that showing up is uh, a part of all of that. And um, Sister Naima, I'm not going to continue slitting your throat now that you're back on stage, Marshallah, so back on the yeah. show. So I, I was just giving a, I was just being given a background, inshallah, about when you first approached me and we spoke. It was in 2003. I still have the email where you're saying you need to write. That's that's 2003. That's 18 years ago. Um, so typical of you not to do it as well. Typical of you not to do it, Dr. Baker. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to get back to you on that. The, what I wanted to say was, but there's something you've said there, Dr. Abdul Haq, and that's that, you know, we find our own stories mundane sometimes. You know, our own stories feel mundane until we actually put them onto paper and somebody goes, that's really interesting. What about this and what about that? And somebody else can see that story. And nobody can see that story until those words are on that page. And like Sister Naim was sort of saying, you know, that some of it can be rubbish. You know, like, yeah, that, you need to work on that bit in the sense of how you express it, but nonetheless, you know, it's there. And I think Sister Sabrina's just touching on that question there. What is your inspiration? What motivates you? I think that's kind of where we lost a bit of connection, Sister Neyman. Can we pick up from there again, like come back to the idea of, you know, you, the, the, the principle behind your book, Show Up, that, you know, it's not just a matter of this, this glean or this guilted uh, edging that we put on things just to make it, but there's a reality that it comes from, inshallah. Bismillah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bismillah. I think, you know, the reality is that for most of us, we are our greatest strength becomes apparent as a result of some of our greatest trials. You know, our character, the best of our character is forged in the fires of the front line. I say that in the book. And, and, and we know this to be true. We see it all around us. You know, I quote this all the time, you know, the, the human being, the human being, male, female, rich, poor, believing, non-believing, whatever, is always in one of three states. He or she has either been tested, they are being tested, or they are going to be tested. So if that's the case, that the sunnah of this life is that they are going to be tests and trials, my greatest wish for a book like Show Up is that it gives us a formula for how to rise as a at how to become a better version of ourselves through each trial because trials are just they're just a fact of life we are going to be tested we we know this for a fact so why not adopt a more, more empowering mindset around trials and tribulations why not adopt a mindset that pushes us forward that allows us to ascend in the levels that allows us to become this, this best version of ourselves by the end of it, we, we have a choice. It's available to us. It's available to every single one of us. So in terms of the inspiration, I, I, I don't like to hear my sisters comfortable in victim mode. I don't like to hear my brothers comfortable in victim mode. And the victim mode for many of us is a comfort zone because we're used to it. It feels familiar. People treat us a particular way when we're miskeen. Maybe they give us sympathy. Maybe they give us time. Maybe they help us. So we're gaining something from being in this kind of comfort zone of victimhood. But what I'm saying is that your best self will never be found in the comfort zone. Your best self, your higher self is outside the comfort zone, in the stretch zone in that part where it's not comfortable anymore, where you're risking something, where maybe you're even afraid to go, 
that's where you are going to really become a better version of yourself and see what you're really capable of. Because while you're in the comfort zone, there's no challenges there. You're just sitting there. You're kind of just wallowing and kind of just, just you know, treading water almost. And I, I feel very, very strongly that this is, you know, maybe not for everyone, but I feel many of us, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a potential, and I believe he has put potential in every single one of us, I feel that a part of our work on this earth is to discover what that highest potential is and strive to achieve it. But that's me. Not everybody has the same mindset, but somebody asked what motivates me, what inspires me. It is the belief that we are so much more than we give ourselves credit for. And we are capable of so much more than we are currently doing. Many, many of us. So it's a rallying cry, really, and that motivational message for sisters to say, don't sit as a victim. Don't sit in a woe is me space. Take back your power. Take back your power. Take back control of what's happening in here and start to, yeah, start to show up, basically. <laughs> MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Um, so Sabrina is saying, uh, I just read your introduction on Wikipedia and with the fact that you moved from Zimbabwe to London to Cairo. Did that help you in your writing? Did that help you in your process in, in getting this stuff together? That's a really interesting question. It's a great question, actually. I find um, the fact that I'm, I'm very multicultural and intersectional, um, you know, my parents are South African, my father's white, my mother's black. I was born in Leeds, but grew up in Zimbabwe, moved to the UK for university, married a Ghanaian, lived in Egypt for 10 years, uh, you know, then, I, you know, I'm back in the UK and, you know, having traveled the world, though that traveling uh, and that kind of broad, I guess, broadened mind uh, and also reading a lot as well through my childhood and teenage years, adulthood, really helped me when it came to some of the children's books, but especially the novel. Because writing a novel in a different culture really is an ability to almost be chameleon-like. So if people have read my book, Boy vs. Girl, for example, it's set in a Pakistani family in Bradford. The two main characters are a set of Pakistani twins. It's in the Bradford Pakistani community. And people who read the book would ask me, like, are you Pakistani? No, I'm not. Similarly, with um, From Somalia with Love, it's set in a Somali community in East London. And it's a very Somali book. But alhamdulillah, maybe the moving kind of the, just, just that melting pot has allowed me to kind of get under the skin of a multitude of different characters. Black Sheep, the main character, Dwayne, and from the streets of South London, and I write him in first person. And, and he, he comes off really well, actually. I have to say, being able to connect with women from a lot of different in my coaching when I'm doing my teaching and when I'm doing my speaking inshallah alhamdulillah mashallah and again I think it's about like you said that the practice of writing you know that you it, it requires repetition in the same way you know if, if you want to get fit you kind of got to put in the you know you got to run the miles you got to you got to push the reps and in the same way to, to write your process, you kind of get that. But then you, you can work yeah. out a character and you long create yards. a whole depth, depth. Yeah, long yards. Long, long yards in that sense, you know. SubhanAllah. Jazakallah khair. Um, so with Show Up, you're, this, is, this, is, this is different to fiction now. This is non-fiction. This is about making an impact. And this is like you said, you know, it's about changing people from going beyond that idea of... Uh, well, beyond that, me that mentality of, of victimhood, but it's actually stepping into kind of what you own. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, he does not burden a soul with more than what he can handle. But I suppose what we're doing with that is, is really looking at it. If Allah has not burdened us more than we can handle, that means that we're more than capable of not just handling it, but we have a way of managing it or overcoming it with ourselves, our iman. Yeah, we've got this. Easing up again a bit. Exactly. I, I, that's one of my favorite uh, ayats to quote when I'm, you know, do talks on this subject because there's just a, there's a couple of ayats 
there's a couple of ayat, there's a few ayat in the Quran that for me are like a trustworthy handhold that I must have yaqeen in this area. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said he will not burden a soul, never burden a soul more than it can bear, that is a promise from the Lord of all the worlds and that is my trustworthy handhold. And I believe in it. I, I speak life into that. If if any time my mind goes, uh, I bring it right back. No, nope, is the truth. The truth is Allah wants good for you. And any test that he sends you, there is ultimately khair in it for you. And how bad it is, no matter how through it. And if that's your mindset, you will not be broken. I think that's a very important point. Because it happens here first. It's not the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Because we know people who have been through horrific circumstances who come back, not like new, but better than before, right? So it's not the circumstance. So one person, the test will, will make them. It, it makes them into this amazingly wise, humble, loyal faithful person full of gratitude you know focused etc another person that same test it breaks them the breaking happened here it's not the circumstance because what happens here is how you understand that situation what you allow that situation to be therefore how you experience that situation it's all up here very nlp ish all of this <laughs> Jazakallah khair. Sister of the Psalms uh, comment made me laugh that the bad connection gin is back. Oh, uh, bad connection again. <laughs> it's plaguing our good conversation, mashallah. Maybe we need, need a idle kursi on it or something, you know. Uh, but um, but you're, yeah, you know, it's 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 really, really important. It's because the test ultimately is not what's what's kind of there in front of us. It's it's what that refining process that comes from us, you know. Um, Sister Rosina is saying they're very true. Your trauma creates you, and I think it's you know, like you said, um, uh, Sister Badria. Yeah, maybe you should, inshallah, get that book, inshallah. I think the first few chapters are available, right? I think you can get a hold of the first few chapters. Which which chapters? Uh, yes, you can. Um, it's available for pre-order. We launch on the 26th of February. Um, I do believe there is a page where you can get uh, the first chapter free just to get you know a sneak peek. But the place to go is my Instagram and my bio on Instagram, which is Naima B. Robert. And uh, yeah, you'll find all the information on that page, including mm -hmm. an excerpt from the first chapter as well. Yeah. So, I mean, see, because I think <clears throat> I think the other thing is, is that certain certain people speak to us. You know, we read certain books or we read certain authors and they connect with us in different ways, you know. And like, subhanAllah, you know, like there are certain authors that just that just that just do that. And I think that that what I love about that is that, you know, our sisters and brothers can access the first chapter and hear your voice, you know. After hearing you today, mashallah, they'll, they'll probably hear you reading it to them as well, mashallah, which is always nice when you speak to an author and then you read their work and you can hear it in their voice. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice blessing to be able to do. Yes. Um, the but, uh, is think, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think there's, there's, there's an opportunity for everyone to sort of download download that chapter and to be able to, to read it and, and, and understand that is this is this something that I can connect with that I can read and that's going to help me um, re-identify myself along this journey because I think that's a lot of what showing up's about it's about um, choosing or reshaping your your identity or a new identity yeah. identity identity yeah definitely definitely big time it's all about a Tim or hero is an identity you have to choose. You can't be both. You have to choose, I'm either going to eat and be a hero, or I'm going to sink and be a victim. I have to choose which identity mm. I'm going to embody. And that is it. Yeah. And I think, 
I think when we talk about that idea of being the, the hero, I mean, everybody's, everybody's the lead character in their life story. That's, that's the fact. And so it's about being that lead character then, isn't it? That, you know, whatever you've watched or experienced in the sense of storytelling, there's always those challenges that individual go through before they get to where they need to be. But it's actually saying that actually I am that lead character in my story. This is, this is a blessing that, like you said, Alhamdulillah, you know, like it's the dua we make up in the, we, when we wake up in the morning, Allah, thank you for, for giving me life for giving me this opportunity and that we have this opportunity to then to refresh, revive and to, to give something back, back to the world, inshallah. You know, Jazakallah. There's also just timing. Of... Wajid, is, uh, I just want to interject. I'm really pleased to see that um, our participants are saying they're, they're picking up the book and they're buying the book. And I want to add something here. Reading particular books is also about timing as well. Okay. So, for example, we know with the Quran, um, someone's mentioned the particular ayat that we read at night, the last um, two ayats of Surah Baqarah, Ayatul Kursi, after every salah. Allah showing us, and it's just come to me now as I'm listening to Sister Naima and you speaking now, timing is of essence. And so looking at the climate that we're all living in at the moment and looking at the timing of the book that Sister Naima is bringing out, I can't think of a more timely moment or poignant time to show up and have time to show up than now so hearing and seeing that sisters are re and brothers are writing we're getting the book we're getting the book yes get it now because some will say i'm going to read it in a month i'm going to read it in six months okay that timing may be right for you but then again it may not be and the impact then will be different to what it is now so listening to sister naomi speaking about what the book is about and that self-empowerment and that self-motivation and being the hero of your own story and your narrative looking at what's taking place globally at the moment and the, the the well-being issues that are there the mental stress and trauma that's there for many just being in the home this may um after the quran and the sunnah obviously we're not going to put anything on equate them to that but this may be part of the antidote that can get you through and prepare you beyond what is taking place now this has just come to me because i'm seeing what everyone's writing so i'm not i know it might be plugging sister naima's book but we've brought her here to hear about why she's written her book but reading is timely and i've just realized Kadra Lama Shafa, allah's the one who plans everything this is the right moment and an opportune moment to read this type of book, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Sign that. The evening. <laughs> yeah, and I think just just building on that, I think, like I said, my um, my dua really with with this time I do a talk or you know have a conversation. My dua is always that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allows people, everyone. get what they need to get from the book, from the conversation. Because everybody has a different need and Allah knows what that need is. So my dua is that whatever it is that you, you need, need um, I am on Instagram, I pray that you find it there. But the main thing is that it's what you need at this, yeah. this yeah. time in you need to hear, inshallah, to allow you to take the next forward on your journey. Inshallah. And ultimately, that's it. You know, it's that it's that like we, we meet people, you know, guides, good people and bad people. And each of us is kind of given as a, a different form of message. You know, uh, Sister Rosina is asking uh, Sister Naima, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start writing for the Muslim youth? Where does one start? And I think you're perfectly positioned, inshallah, to, to answer that one. Yes, exactly the same advice I gave earlier develop a writing habit be prepared to write badly you know join the Muslim writers Facebook group we have a, a great community of women there um, who are all writing at different stages for different audiences different genres um, you know sign up for any one of my courses I have 
courses on fiction, writing, uh, and just general writing, you know, authors, well, people to, to write their big nonfiction books. But yeah, read the kind of books that you want to write and start writing. And don't be afraid of writing because we all are at the beginning. Yeah, the, 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 it just takes a bit of courage to start with. And I think, you know, maybe Sister Naima can sort of explain as well, is that once you start writing, it, it, it gets there, you know. They, they talk about writing being the, the art of the, the, the insane because you're constantly editing. You know, like if you're an artist, you create a canvas and you've done it and then you say, you know what, the next one I'm going to do it this way. Once you've done a bit of writing, you keep going back and you edit it, and then you go back and then you edit it, and you keep going back and you edit it. And you can be continuously doing that, but you have to kind of need that courage to get started and then get it out there into the world and get some get some response, some feedback. Get some, like you said, use the Facebook groups and people who are out there, mashallah, because there's a lot of support. There's surprisingly a lot of support to, to get these sort of projects on the, on the go. And Wajid, can I can I come in there quickly? Because yes. I want to take it in a slightly different dimension is, and, and put us and our sister Naima. So, so it's interesting. My my thing as well, sister Naima. As I mentioned at the beginning of this um, um, podcast, mashallah, you're a niqab wearing orthodox um, sister, mashallah to Rakla, and you've had success in the wider market. It's not just a, a niche where you're you're preaching to the converted in that instance. Now we've got some non-Muslims. Um, I'm watching this. We have um, every week, mashallah, tabarakallah. And I think that the work that you're doing is the embodiment of empowerment, of an empowered um, Muslim woman. Um, one comment's come in, which hasn't been shown, it's been shared with me. Someone's saying that about the dress, you know, the usual statement of the dress that um, you being forced to dress like that. And yours, this show and you speaking is showing that this is exactly the opposite to that perception. So I want to bring that to you because men shouldn't be speaking on behalf of sisters, women in this instance, because we have many sisters like yourself and those who are participating in this show who are perfectly capable, capable to articulate their positions, their beliefs, their practices themselves. So I'm going to say Bismillah and throw it over to you to the non-Muslims ask that question, thinking that you're you're forced to dress as you are and to present yourself as you are. And as a, a renowned author, I open the floor to you to respond to that type of misperception. Absolutely. Um, you know, showing up in a particular way um, in the industry and You know, I, what I, all I had to do was I'd go into writing to become famous or to build a platform or to become a celebrity. So I didn't really have to worry about my appearance. Remember, this is before social media, which is a very different world then to how it is now. Um, and I've found, to be honest, that, alhamdulillah, because of money, a certain amount of stars, they see the work. Um, and I, I, I know how to represent myself and my work. So I, and you know, and you know how to present yourself. You know, you know how to respect yourself, confident, how to communicate with people. The way you dress is not going to be the issue. That's not going to be the deal breaker. The deal breaker is if you, for example, have difficult. You can't convince people you're not very good yet you know if you still haven't mastered whatever the skill is it could be it could be coding thing you know it doesn't have to be in the creative anything but if you haven't mastered that skill yet then that could be the deal breaker um but in a lot of areas your, your dress is not the deal breaker there will be other other things that that you need to work on that you can't that will allow you to show up in those spaces dress however you're dressed and people will have to respect you because you know your stuff and you bring you like you you have the goods basically not whether that just the 
bad connection again. connection again. Yeah. Just that moment, yes. So the the, the comment we caught was about yeah, we just so we just caught you talking about um that that's not the deal breaker, how you dress doesn't mean anything and that's kind of where we Some time for rupiah on the system. <laughs> 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 Just a on my connection and done with it. Yeah, I don't know. Subhanallah. Manish. Alhamdulillah. Are you on are you on your phone, Sister Naima? Alhamdulillah. Are you using your phone or a computer? Laptop? Yes. On the phone, on the phone. Okay, yeah, yeah, because the signal should be better there. But I think what we got from you, and I think the answer is clear, it, it's not about appearance. It's about, and this is a very important point, actually. It's never about appearance unless the beholder is very superficial. It's about the substance. It's about the ability. It's about the, the qualifications. It's about the content this is what I got from your, your message there. And I, and I think the, the individual, the non-Muslim um, viewer who posed that question, just hearing that from Sister Naima should go some way to answering the question that what Sister Naima is doing with regards to the work she's doing, with regards to how she presents herself, is all from her choice. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Not anyone else's, but her choice. And this is how we should, we, uh, non-Muslims should realise this about Muslim men and women and children, okay? Especially living in, uh, as a convert, Sister Naima like me as a convert. So we've chosen particular aspects without coercion. And Sister Naima embodies that and is the epitome of that in her work and the success that we are hearing and seeing from her, mashallah, tabarakallah. You're welcome, Rodney. You're very welcome. Th thank you for asking the question. And you'll see that we are prepared to engage. It's important that we engage. So thank you for even asking the question. Wajid, yeah. back to you. Yeah, subhanAllah. I'm just, yeah, I think we need to rook here before we start our conversation next time. Because I'm really, that th your words are so important here, Sister Naima, in the sense of how you, you're going to express them and put them there, inshallah, you know. And uh, just to say that, um, you know, we, when we talk about timing, you know, there are certain elements in our lives, you know, where we go through certain things. And, you know, like when, like, for example, like when you read the Quran, there are certain words or certain verses that will, that will grip you. You know, at that particular time, it'll, it'll resonate with you, uh, you know, and it'll stay with you and it'll inspire you. And in the same way, you know, we have, we're humans. You know, we need that interaction. We need those sort of kind of those, that, that words of guidance, the, the people around us to do that. And I think a lot of the times when we look at this kind of stuff, it, it doesn't have a faith uh, core to it. You know, fundamentally, it's not faith based. And I think so a lot of the time it can be quite a challenge for, for people from the Muslim community mm -hmm. to find something that uplifts them and motivates them to get on with, with stuff in life. Uh, rather than just, you know, just the focus on, like, just, well, you're doing your fajr. Okay, great. You tick that box. Is that enough now? Actually, there's so much more I have to give to the world after I've, I've, I've you know, done what I can to please the last part of the Allah. So this, this, I think that there needs to be that, that drive from within the ummah to sort of captivate that, that, that talent, that potential that is within us uh, and within others. To be able to do that. I don't know if Sister Name is so, saying. Inshallah. May Allah accept all our efforts, I mean, and make it easy for us, even with this bad connection. I mean, I mean, for my, I mean. I mean. <laughs> I mean. I am. Oh no. SubhanAllah. Subhanallah. I think we're going to have to do this again. I we think we're going to have to do this two, again. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah. We'll I think we're going to do a part, part one and a half, I think, because we've got a lot of stuff to do. 
Yeah, inshallah. So, um, yes. Mr. Asma is asking uh, the books where available she can on find Amazon. Book. Uh, people are asking where the books go. You know, people are asking where they can find the books. They can find them on Amazon. Find them on Amazon. Find them on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, book depository just needs to search Naima Bila. Yeah, but it's when is it? When's the actual launch date? Because it's it's on pre-order at the moment, right? That means that twenty sixth of February it goes live. Yeah, 26th of uh, February. Okay, inshallah. So 26th. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with Sister Ibtissam, inshallah. Sister Ibtissam, if you do the Rukia before you join us, inshallah. And uh, yeah, we'll make yes, the offer. I agree connection. with Ibtissam. I agree with what she's saying. <laughs> yeah, inshallah, ta'ala, inshallah, you know. Um, and again, I think, I think I the other thing. That, give me. You know, you know, subhanAllah, there's, there's something you said actually, and I think that got brought up, and there's a, there's a parallel there. I think, you know, in the sense of the question that got raised and the idea, you know, the, the, the reality that it is our substance that shines through. And I think, you know, when you look, we're talking about the book, it's about that substance that shows up, because that, that's what it takes to show up, doesn't it? It takes more than just... Uh, just you know, a, a motivational quote on a on a poster yeah. to, and, to and get you out of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we all have that substance. We all have it. We just have to access it and tap into that inner power that we all have, uh, and just bring it forward and allow it to lead the way instead of fear and 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 blame and shame and victimhood and all of those uh, negative. Uh, sides of ourselves that we also have you know we all as well but don't let them lead you don't let the fear lead you don't let the the lack of confidence lead or the self-doubt or the pessimism or any of those things you let them lead the tawakkul the iman the positivity the sincerity the, the the optimism is what leads that's what we want we want to lead with gratitude lead with patience lead with power that's that's what we want to lead lead with inshallah inshallah jazakallah khair uh dr abdul haq do you have anything <laughs> uh, bro yes that, we did we did mashallah. That, that was that was good mashallah that was good Alhamdulillah. dr abdul haq do you have anything you'd like to just solve just as we get towards the end of our show now inshallah no i i just um i i feel that this is long overdue i think um it's timely i'm seeing from our sisters our brothers our guests that have been here that this is something that's very very engaging and um, as you've said, and I'm glad Sister Naima has subscribed to it as well, I think that we need to have um, you on again, Sister Naima. I think that this, again, is a timely book. Um, maybe when upon its release, if you don't mind coming back and maybe reading sure. um, some excerpts, because as, as um, Wajid said, actually hearing your voice and you reading with the intonations and, and the nuances and everything, and that will inspire more questions mm. from the audience. I think that would be fantastic to, to have you on to do that, inshallah. Let's do it. Let's do it, inshallah. inshallah. Then inshallah, we will, we will, it, we will, we will arrange it. Yeah, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair to all of you for tuning in to the Baker Broadcast Show this evening. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you, Sister Naima, for your time and your perseverance. And for all of our viewers and our listeners, and again, Dr. Abdul Haq, always, always a pleasure to see you again. And uh, for those of you that have enjoyed the show, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you all, all, all for your comments. It's lovely to see your names here again, inshallah. And, uh, you know, uh, I think it's about keeping these du'as going, to, inshallah, um, we can. And inshallah, yeah, Sister Sabrina, inshallah, we will get Sister Naima back on. Um, and to, to so cover some of the areas which we didn't quite get to explore and to also talk more about from the from the content of the work that she's producing now, inshallah. And again, inshallah, you know, it, it, it inspires you that this this kind of inspires you that your limitations on creativity are, are, are only from our own minds. You know, subhanAllah, Allah has honored us and blessed us with so much to to explore, to find ourselves, to support each other and to be an aid to whoever we can from the ummah, from, from the dunya, from wherever it is. And that, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us, guide us and keep us upon the haq and keep us sincere and may from our actions, 
other people remain upon the haq and remain sincere as well, inshallah. And it gives me great pleasure again. Jazakallah khair. Thank you again, Sister Naima. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Abdul Haq. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, we'll be, we'll be, me and Dr. Abdul Haq, uh, we'll be back with you next Monday, inshallah. And we will update you when Sister Naima is going to join us. So from uh, all of us from this evening, inshallah, jazakumullah khair. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh.